Y'all, who is the real villain on Married to Medicine? That is the question that I think that we need to ponder up in this good old jamboree. Who indeed is the real villain? Is it the evil duplicitous quad? <laughs> who must be banished into the nether regions of reality. Whatever you call the people who are banished in reality to <laughs> Or is it Dr. Simone who savagely brought up a very horrible tragedy that occurred at Quad's home with a young child. That one was a little tough for me. Um, and we'll touch on it in a bit. Or is it Dr. Jackie who has somehow turned herself from someone who has said something that offended so many people to potentially a victim of the evil and duplicitous quad? Or is it Phaedra who do we believe Really tried to get $4,000 per month from Dr. G? Or is it Dr. Heavenly who is carrying the bones, but not on their YouTube page no more? Who is the villain? Or is Toya the mastermind of it all pulling Dr. Simone's strings from behind the scenes? We have ourselves a caper, you guys, and we have got to figure it out. And Sherlock Homeboy is on the case. But if you haven't already done so, make sure you guys subscribe to this channel, hit that notification bell button, and join the texting community. That number's right there. But also like this video. It helps the engagement. So let's get into it. Married to Medicine Reunion Season 10, baby. We are in Season 10. Let us know what you would rate this reunion episode on a scale of one to ten i myself am honestly going to tell you guys i'm gonna give it a 10 out of 10 baby 10 out of 10 i mean i was mad i was frustrated i was horrified i was i felt all the things and to be quite frank with you that's what i'm looking for in a reality tv show i was not bored i mean so much of this is new things that are happening continuously and new pieces of information coming up, you know, and just it's just interesting to watch all of these things unfold in this friendship group that has become quite tricky. OK, and. It makes you wonder, were the things that Mariah alleged in her video interview with Carlos King about the turning tide of the culture of married to medicine becoming such that the icing out is the way that the ladies have begun to move. It's a shame because we're not privy to the relationships out off camera. We hear about them, right? But we don't really know. All we do know is that allegedly Quad is not calling the girls when she is not filming and some of the girls are calling her when she is going through hard times but they are not getting calls back okay so i guess it depends on which what level of friendship what, what you call friendship for some of these ladies right because for me i'm not a person that's talking on the telephone all the time so i you know my friends I usually try to make time to see them when I can, or we talk via text message. I'm just not the phone person. I'm not going to be on the phone shooting the breeze with you all day. I don't have time for that. Um, it's just not in my nature. It's just not my thing, you know, um, to each his own. But my friends know this about me, right? And it's I, it's occasions where I do, 
and it's certain people that I can, but by and large, I mean, I try to be on the move. So anyway, let's get into this reunion. I again rated, I, I rated it a 10 out of 10, but what do you rate it? Let me know in the chatterization down below. All right, so the reunion is indeed a Napa-themed reunion, okay? We got the barrels in the back. Um, I did notice that Alicia tells Sweet T that she was going to have her back. I have been saying that Sweet T does need some type of ally that's going to really stand 10 toes down with her the same way some of these other ladies have. But um, we'll have to wait and see because Alicia did not make her debut in this episode. So anyway, Phaedra's package is up first and her relationship with the truth is in question. Did she or did she not ask Dr. G for $4,000 per month? And, you know, how does it feel for her being on Married to Medicine as opposed to Real Housewives of Atlanta? She feels like it's less cantankerous being on Real, uh, uh, being on Married to Medicine than Real Housewives of Atlanta. Fun fact, we have learned from Quad that Phaedra would seem to be tied to Mary to Medicine for at least the next three years. So let's take a look at this. And our friends from the Bravo Shade Room happened to catch because Quad was on the fire last night on the social media, okay? Now, I want you to direct you to the second uh, tweet here because we're going to discuss the top one later. But she did say, wow. She doesn't want to attach herself to the Titanic. In other words, sink. But I helped her anchor herself for the next three years or marry to medicine. My, how soon do we forget? And I will tell you why this is interesting to me. We will later hear that uh, apparently Dr. Heavenly even admits to talking cash money ish about Phaedra. It's even on the show. But for some reason, it's only quad that for some reason Phaedra has an issue with. And again, it goes back to Phaedra to me going along to get along with which Simone didn't have a problem with that. I mean, I guess not as long as everybody's following up under y'all your wing and toy your wing. Anyway, uh allegedly let me put the alleged badge up here because we're going to get into some things today, baby. Some thank to thank, thank, thanks. Um, as we try to decipher who the real Vivian is up in this beat. Anyway, um, so anyway, Toya wondered why Phaedra didn't have Apollo at the kid's birthday party. But we're going to get to Apollo when we get to it. More on Apollo later in another video. Anyway, um, why did Phaedra switch up on the quad? Phaedra says she didn't feel like she wanted to go, like quad would want to go to Toya's Napa Valley trip anyway. Um, quad felt like Phaedra, again, like I said, was going along to get along, and she turned her back on her. The thing that I dislike about Phaedra in this moment is that she just is really cagey about you know, how and why it is that she ended up on a separate flight. And Toya has to remind us that Toya, that Phaedra told her allegedly that she didn't want to be on a flight with Quad. Um, it would have been nice if Phaedra had shown up as, I guess, maybe a true ally for Quad because she didn't have nobody. Um, and for... Phaedra to feel so harshly about quads talking about her. It's interesting that she doesn't have that same energy for Dr. Heavenly, who has clearly said even worse about her, or at least enough that she was able to admit it during the reunion. So I'm like, where's that same energy for Dr. Heavenly that you got for quad? So anyway, um, Heavenly said that Quad has said a lot about Phaedra, and Quad said that she was not dragging her. <sighs> Whatever. Phaedra says that she's never kissed Dr. G. But Sweet T says that he said that they kissed. Now, I don't know why Dr. G would tell his wife that they kissed, and then Phaedra suddenly has amnesia. And again, this is the problem that I have with Phaedra is this circular talking that she does 
where she's able to kind of snake oil her way out of situations without ever giving really true answers. And I do feel like, I mean, girl, just be real about it. Did you or did you not kiss the man? If you did, cool. And if not, cool. I mean, ain't no, I mean, it, it, it ain't nothing. He didn't already told his wife, so it's clearly okay. So why don't you just go ahead and tell us what you remember? I guess you don't remember. That's fine. It might it might have been many moons ago. And if he didn't have that four thousand dollars, I might not have no memory either. I mean, for you. You know what I'm saying? Because you wanted the four thousand allegedly. So anyway. Um, but the way, baby, the quad broke down that $4,000 per month that Phaedra says she, I mean, her purses cost 10 and, Fa and quad said, well, girl, three months of that $4,000, that'll get you $12,000 so you can get your pair of shoes for $2,000. You can, you can get your purse for $2,000 for $10,000. Then you can get a pair of shoes for two. Okay. Um, listen. In my opinion, y'all know I'm not even gonna hold y'all. I'm a fan of quads. I like the I, I like the energy that she brings on the show. Nobody else, maybe except for Dr. Jackie or Mariah, could have delivered a read like that. And it wasn't even a read. It was just like the way she just rattled off the math. It was just like yes. I mean, it makes sense to me. Okay. And Phaedra didn't have no comeback for that because really there was nothing to come back from because Quad pretty much laid it out flat, right? Um, but what Phaedra does do is what she does best is deflect. And she's like, well, he didn't have $4,000 anyway. And y'all still married him. <laughs> now, I ain't saying she no gold digger, but she ain't messing with no broke, broke, broke. I mean, gold digging is the theme for this weekend's reunion and Potomac, baby. It is given gold, okay, or silver or pyrite, as Ashley Darby said. Meanwhile, they do play some type of uh, game about whether Phaedra is guilty or not guilty. It's mostly shade about nobody really believing the things that Phaedra says. And I have believed half the things she says anyway myself because when asked direct questions, she has the hardest time crafting a, a, a clear response. I mean... Sometimes they either be it's a yes or no question. If you can't answer that, let me tell y'all something. When go back to if you did you guys watch Real Housewives of Salt Lake City and, and chime down in the chat if you do. I'm gonna give you an example of somebody, and, and this is the reason why you should always be able to give clear-cut answers to things, unless you were being purposely obtuse. So Jen Shaw, I remember, was asked on the show what she did for a living. Everybody had a hard time understanding what it was that she did. If you cannot explain what you do for a living in a simple sentence, how do you earn your money? This is what I do. OK, or this is what I don't do. Maybe she just I mean, you could either say, well, I'm a trust fund baby or I just collect money. My man buy me everything, whatever the case may be. But you should be able to easily explain what it is so people can understand it now. Um, and when she could not understand uh, explain it in a way that was cohesive, succinct, and intelligible. I, for me, if I found it like, mm, girl, something is awry here, and I don't know what it is. Little did I know it was the, it, it was what it was. I was never expecting that because I mean, why get on TV if you're doing all that? But anyway, um, comment out orc. Um, Phaedra to me could do a lot better job at responding to things in a way that is very, um, like I said, succinct and actually gives you a clue as to what is really going on. And that has been Phaedra's MO for her, her, her time on reality television. Granted, she's funny. She's, she's, uh, she's adorable. She is whimsical. But at the end of the day, I am looking for a tad bit of substance to go along with this salt that you're throwing on this plate. OK, you got a whole lot of seasoning, but ain't no meat, baby. A whole lot of seasoning, but ain't no veggies on the plate. A whole lot of seasoning and just a bunch of starch. That ain't healthy. Anyway, um. At that point, Dr. Heavenly then says that Sweet T thinks she knows everything about her man and there's so much she just doesn't know. The thing that I don't like about this statement when I really sat and I thought about it is this. Anytime a person gets with someone new, i.e. you who are watching this, let's say you just start dating somebody new. And you meet their friends. 
Nine times out of 10, they friends know where the bodies are buried. I'm sure Sweet T's friends know a lot about Sweet T that she just don't know either. So at a certain point in time, that statement really don't, it don't add up to nothing. You cannot invite this girl to the show, then lord it over her that, oh, but girl, I got all the tea on your man. Every time she she does something to clap back at you. That's the only thing I don't like. Because here's the thing. I feel like with Dr. Heavenly and Sweet Tea, this is no shade to Sweet Tea. But Sweet Tea has enough going on with her that Dr. Heavenly can actually read for her to not have to reach for Dr. G. I mean, that's just that's just the fact. So continuously going back to I know what your man did last summer is kind of like, girl, we all everybody's man did something last summer. OK, but who cares? Let's talk about what's in the, in the garage now, as Nene says. You know what I'm saying? So I, it, I'm reminded of this um, phrase that Emily Simpson said about Vicki Gumbelson. And it was basically a statement of like, you know, we don't have to talk about, you know, her looks. I mean, we, there's a, there's enough to speak about with her personality. Her character is bad. We can talk about that. So I just kind of feel like, you know, the the continuous reach around for Dr. G in order to get to Sweet T is like, to me, no, you got enough that you can work with with Sweet T. I mean, again, it's no shade to her, but it's just like. Let's if we want to throw blows, let's just throw them. Let's throw them directly, because at the, guess what? Dr. G can't come back at Dr. Heavenly. He can't because as a man, he's going to be looked at crazy when he do. So it's like that's a that's a no. That's a no brainer. And again, don't invite this girl to the mix. If y'all if you don't like how she plays, you know what I'm saying? Because now y'all both don't like how each other play. So it's either got to be a, a, we're going to play with each other or not. That's how I feel. OK. Um, they, uh, Phaedra and Quad do want to work things out. Phaedra just wants to know that Quad will not be dragging her behind her back. But I'm like, didn't Dr. Heavenly just admit that she did the same thing to you? So why aren't you going to tell her that as well? I mean, I guess I, the thing is that Quad and Phaedra were allegedly so close, but at the end of the day, it's like, girl, why don't you just pick up the phone and call Quad and ask her, girl, did you say these things about me or not? Nah? But it seemed to me like Phaedra was more interested in getting on the Simone um, Simone's cocktail dress train than anything else versus riding the train that she came in on, which is about two miles long. And you can't barely see nobody else's dress at the reunion because it's all a big pink puff. OK, on the flow. Meanwhile. Um, Phaedra relays to the group that she told Quad she wasn't happy with how the funeral service turned out, which is why Quad called Dr. Heavenly and told Dr. Heavenly what she said. Apparently, Quad also told Phaedra everything Dr. Heavenly said about her as well, which Dr. Heavenly does admit to talking ish about Phaedra. So now I got to look at you, Quad. Quad, was you being the middle girl and was you running back and forth and telling everybody, you know, telling the tea, talking the tea and telling the tea at, at the same time? Was you... Now, are you the duplicitous one here in this situation? We got to ask the questions. We got I'm, it's, I'm Sherlock Homeboy today and everybody's being questioned. OK, everybody's being called into the room, into the investigation room, into the interrogation room. I'm asking all the questions to everybody because I'm trying to figure out who the villain is. OK, or is it multiple? Who who did it? Who who did it? I want to know. OK. Speaking of Toya. The wine club comes up and her needs and criticisms of her man come up as well. I do think that Toya is quintessential to this group when I really look at it and think about the historical context of this show. So, you know, I'm not mad at it. Um, I'm not mad at, you know, Toya and all her demands or whatever like that. But Andy's like, girl, now I can't tell if this question was offensive or not. Because he was like, well, did you grow up like this? I mean, it's it's kind of a fair question, but it's kind of like, I, I don't know why, I, some, for some reason, something in my spirit is giving it a side eye. It's kind of like when Andy asked about what, she, what Monique was doing, what her money, what her check, you know, about, and Monique was like, that little check that y'all get. <laughs> I don't know why something about this moment just reminded me of that. But anyway, I guess to, to a certain degree, it is fair. If you, did you, basically, I guess what he's trying to say is, did you grow up with, you know, 
a, a high level of expectation? Did you grow up rich and fabulous and therefore expect it? And Toya's like, no, she did not. But what she did learn from being picked on and teased and talked about from, you know, what she did have, she learned to have a higher level of expectation for herself. So the opposite happened for Toya. And that's interesting. I feel like that's something that we've never really delved into, for, to be honest with you. Um, Toya says that the wine was donated. The, the donated wine for the Met, the Med Gala. She, she tries to explain that the wine is given to her but she still has to pay for it. And this to me falls under the Jen Shaw of it all because I didn't really understand it. Um, and maybe that could just be me and my me and my note my note taking self. But Norman, did you understand that as well? You yes. Won't it confuse? And it was like now girl. Mm -hmm. Oh, you think about ordering you some wine from the thing from the club? Hmm. Ain't you ain't you fancy? What you, what, how, how you paying for all that? Anyway, um, it comes up about whether or not Dr. Heavenly handled Toya correctly. And Dr. Jackie says it was not the right time. And so we do get some throwback clips from the past 10 years of drama and argumentation. Um, we did get a package of the, the black doctors doing their doctoring. And of course, Dr. Jackie talking to Vice President Kamala Harris about maternal mortality rates. And so we do talk a little bit about the Ozempic of it all because that has been a hot topic over this past year and it still continues to be a hot topic today. We learned that Dr. Heavenly tried it. We also learned a little bit about Dr. Heavenly says that the weight comes back, but Dr. Jackie asserts that you have got to change your lifestyle in addition to this dramatic weight loss that you are seeing. So if you're not trying to run up your run to the gym, okay, which long, honestly, I might run back to the gym today. I just, it's something, I'm just, I've just fallen in love. Anyway, um, I, it's something about the gym that's just like getting like, it's just keeping me motivated. And like, I see, I feel like I'm seeing progress, baby. And you know, once you start seeing progress, you start to be like, yes, come on muscles. You know what I'm saying? Like you start to feeling it, you know? So anyway, I probably ain't gonna go back. I might. I don't know. Who knows? Anyway, um, Dr. Jackie found herself in the hot water okay, about a month ago. Okay, two months ago, three months ago at this point. Dang, time is flying. And so, anyway, from a from a clip back in 2020, and so Dr. Jackie, you know, is very upset and was just it was the hardest thing she's ever had to deal with. Phaedra was the first to stand up for her because she knows what it's like to be canceled. And she says the judgment shouldn't be based on one faux pas. It should be based on the work. Do I agree with what Phaedra said? Absolutely. Was Phaedra canceled at the time? Not, to, I mean, I don't know. That's debatable because I find it hard to cancel people in general because, I mean, it's kind of like the person doesn't cease to exist, right? So maybe they cease to exist for you. I really don't know. What I do think is that Phaedra was accused of saying something horrible about Candy. Now, unless she is saying to us that that is not true, then I, I need to understand more about this. But, un but unfortunately, Phaedra has a refusal to talk about this topic. So we just have to take her word for what she is saying about feeling canceled. Now, again, did she maybe lose her job? Maybe. I don't know. I Because they seem to they they wanted her back. So, I mean, if you up for rehire at the company, did you really lose your job? I don't know. What I do know is. Um, Phaedra found herself in some hot water from something that she allegedly said. Dr. Jackie found herself in hot water for something that is factual that she said. So there's a little bit of a difference there. And then, in my opinion, to try to reduce that moment to it being about quad is laughable to me. It is laughable because what that says is, oh, quad is responsible for some for bringing attention to something that Dr. Jackie actually factually said. 
You don't think maybe the people just went back into the archives and found that clip? Somebody probably had been sitting on that clip for a while anyway. And felt a certain type of way about it. So maybe there was that. But I just think to blame Quad for it is a little. I get that y'all don't like this woman, but it felt to me like Dr. Jackie really kind of did a matrix when when that situation was brought up. And instead of just simply sitting in it and owning it, she chose to, I mean, later on, I mean, I just felt like it was kind of like a slow matrix swerve into, but it must have been quad because it comes up later. It does come up later. Don't come up right then, but it comes up later. And I just feel like it was just a very interesting way of changing the 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 tenor or the tone of the topic to make it as though someone did something to you dr jackie when no this is something that you said and if you regret saying it just say that and leave it alone period speaking of that moment and I, again i'm gonna touch on it again when we get to it but quad said this why would why would i resurface the clip of Jackie and Heavenly. Heck, I don't even see the the um oh, I can't read it. My bad, y'all. I didn't even see it the first time. I wouldn't do anything to hurt anyone or berate them on social media. I know what it feels like to be bullied and not given the chance to say your piece or be heard. Now, you know, she did throw she did do a little quad in there. Okay, she did a little Jedi quad. I ain't going to even lie to you cuz quad do don't always have the best method for also accepting responsibility but in this moment i feel like the responsibility for that clip needs to lie solely with dr jackie and to be honest with you y'all sitting around blaming quiet well you ain't take the clip is still up it's still it's still there so it's not like oh quad is quad is the villain in that you know what i'm saying that she might be another type of villain in somebody else's story but i just don't think that she is the villain here okay as Mariah Huck says, catch. And I'm going to keep saying it because I just feel like it'd be appropriate and it's a part of the Married to Medicine history. So, anywho, okay, who, who, um, Andy says that, well, girl, it all goes back to Heavenly's YouTube channel. Um, we learned that the ladies were rallying around Dr. Jackie, and I don't, I do feel like. She deserves to have the women support her. I, 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 I again was not in favor of canceling Dr. Jack. I'm not. A, I'm not a cancel type person in general. I am happy that there was a at least a lesson learned in that because there were people who felt hurt by what she was saying, and I just felt like it just needed to be addressed. And I felt like had she just addressed it head on in the beginning. It wouldn't have it wouldn't have continued to spiral the way that it did. Anyway, um, so Dr. Jackie did not hear from Quad. It comes up that basically Quad texted Dr. Jackie because Dr. Heavenly had called Quad and said that basically it was being thrown around the group. Of course it would be thrown around the group because these ladies detest, the they detest Quad, okay? Um, that she might have had something to do with it. And Dr. Heavenly told her that was not right. And I'm like, Dr. Heavenly, do, do you believe that Quad did that? Like, do you believe that enough to ask her that? I just can't see it. This is your rider. This is your other rider die dog. Like y'all, y'all, y'all be y'all be kind of freaking and fracking. So would you believe that she would have something to do with that? I don't know. It just don't seem like something Quad would do. It just does not seem that way to me. Um, speaking of Quad, her going MIA is next, along with her popping up out of the coffin and getting kicked off the girls' trip. She acknowledges that she's done a lot of harm. She apologizes for the third time. She admits she was wrong for saying Toya was cheating. 
And I love that she threw in there, especially after Dr. Simone said that I was sleeping with the contract. I, I shouldn't have done that to you. Toya says it's the first time that she's ever apologized like this, even though it does feel convenient. Um, I do feel like Toya has is justified for feeling how she feels in that moment. I do think that this is the first time that Quad has said, you hurt, I hurt you, period. I am sorry, period. I mean, there was a little, but I was hurt too, but it wasn't like it normally is, right? And I think that, that if she had come into the funeral services with that mentality in the beginning that they could have had a different jumping off point to begin rebuilding some of these friendships. I don't think that Dr. Simone is ever going to be interested in rebuilding with Quad. I, I would have thought that Toya hated her more, but based on this, I feel like it's really Dr. Simone. Now, whether or not that's coming from a place of, of genuine hurt is debatable for me because I did feel like Dr. Simone was doing just a bit too much. And she said some things that I didn't like, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, They do call out Quad for saying that, you know, telling Toya at one moment she was really proud of her for the Napa trip. And then in the next moment that she was just there for the check. Simone felt, I mean, uh, Quad felt like Toya didn't want her there anyway, but I'm like, we did see Toya tell the girls that she wanted to, at least, if, 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 if they are a group of good friends, they should try to keep the friend group together. And I do feel like that was the right thing. Um, even though when Quad showed up, I just didn't feel like they were welcoming to her. And I just got to be honest about that. And so I don't know. I don't know. Um, so when it is explained that Dr. Uh, that Qu Dr. Heavenly told Quad not to call Dr. Jackie after the incident, Dr. Simone is perplexed why Quad would need Dr. Heavenly's permission to call Dr. Jackie. And Quad is like, girl, I know they, they besties. Why would I not listen to her if she's telling me that? Um, Quad says she asked if if that's what the girls were thinking, that she was the one who did the, the you know, uh, put re made the clip come alive again or whatever like that about Dr. Jackie. And um, she wanted to call, you know, and Dr. Heavenly said, no, we get that. And what about Quad going to Sweet T's shower? Quad felt like that the girls were asking about her so much. We really can't get into the fact that it seemed like it was more of a production thing that Quad would bring Phaedra to that Phaedra would bring Quad to Sweet T's thing. So I don't even know why that was really asked. I think I thought that that was established already, but I could be confused. It comes out that no one has called Quad, according to her. And she says, well, and Simone is in a tizzy at this point because she said when Quad had something happen, she shows up, but Quad didn't do the same, especially without a camera or a microphone around. Now, had Simone left it there to me, I would have probably been a little bit more okay with this situation. But I think because, and because it's been said, I got I'm a, I'm gonna go ahead and speak about it. But I think that it, because it involved a child, and because it involved something that happened outside of filming. And yes, a lot of us did already know about it. I do think that I understand that Simone wanted to reference the incident, but I just think that it would have done, it would have been better served, not said. Specifically, that there was a tragedy involving a child. I did not like that. You could tell that Quad was trying to tell her to stop. And Simone kept going. And to me, the hollering, hooting, screaming, gums flapping, popping, lip smacking, screaming, crying, wailing that Simone was doing, talking about if she stops, if she starts, if she's telling the truth, I'll be quiet. If she starts lying, I'm talking. And I'm like, girl, for what? Why are you so upset about this? What has she done to you lately? Okay. Now, granted, 
we do get Quad acknowledging because I felt like Quad at that moment knew she was in a lose lose situation. She's panting, screaming, crying, and 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 just wallowing around in the fact that this tragedy has happened, and now it's fodder for reality TV and reality t it's like you got to continuously relive it because now we all going to be talking about it so to me it's that level of insensitivity that simone had for her to be you know i'm not even going to say what i'm about to say i'm not going to say it but just for simone to be in the position that she's in it's shocking to me that that would even come up like that to me okay um i would have had the wherewithal to not even go there OK, I could have proved you could you had she had her point proven when she basically said, I have been there for you. And, you know, I have you had things happen in your life that I was there for you for. I invited you to my home and you could not do the same. So quad again, like I said, in the lose lose situation, I trying to make quad seem like she innocent because quad ain't perfect. You know, quad do a little a lot. Of, quad do a lot of digging of her own of her own grave since we're talking about coffins or whatever. Like, well, maybe that's not the best term. I use the coffin reference because she did pop up out of, out of coffin. But I want to I'm going to say it. And I'm going to take it back because I also was just talking about something else that's very serious. So let me say let me state it better. And because I, I want to also show you all that I ain't perfect either. So I'm going to correct myself. OK, I'm going to say it like this. Quad don't always do herself any favors. And that's real. That's real. And she's gonna have to she's gonna have to learn how to work around her own traumas and her own issues so that she can react and and stand in this group and on better terms with these ladies in terms of how she wanna handle their friendships. And that don't mean you gotta be friends with everybody, girl. Pick and choose. Simone ain't the one. Okay. Toya looked like she could be. Like y'all, I mean, I felt like Toya was almost on the fence. Maybe Dr. Heavenly, you could you could patch things up with Phaedra. A uh, Dr. Alicia, sweet tea is just gonna be awkward for y'all because y'all, you know, you you used to be married to her husband. But I wouldn't even give Dr. Jackie the time of day at, at, at this point anymore, honestly, especially after what Dr. Jackie said at the end. Okay. Um, and, and this ain't a knock on Dr. Jackie. I'm talking about from Quad's perspective. So anyway, um Simone, her point was. And I don't disagree with this, is that friendship is not just about this platform. She could have just said that because that was a powerful statement to me. Um, Quad does finally pull it together, like I said, and addresses, you know. Basically, she first addresses pulling Simone to the side for dinner and wanting to apologize for anything that she's done wrong. And she said, Dr. Simone allegedly told her, well, girl, you did nothing wrong. I just don't want Toya mad at me. Dr. Simone says, those weren't my words, girl. It was it was the meaning the same. Was the meaning the same? Was the meaning the same? OK. So Dr. Heavenly even says, well, girl, that's what you told me. And I believe her. Dr. Simone goes in about how she's not going to do anything to accept this one. I'm not going to do anything that would upset Toya, that would upset Toya, who has been there for me. She has cooked her food. She has shined her shoes. She has changed her diapers. She has built her houses. She has brought her wine, free wine. She has poured the liquor in her mouth like Megan Thee Stallion. She poured Henny down her throat. She poured tequila shots down her throat. She picked her up on the side of the road one day. She came and, and brought her lunch on Tuesday. She brought her lunch on Wednesday. She brought her a bologna sandwich on Thursday. She cooked us grits and ham on Friday. And Saturday, she took her to brunch. Sunday, she took her to another brunch. She took her to the gay brunch at that okay so you know they had a good time baby she took her everywhere she took her to the club that this on the sunday night because that's where the people go on sunday night then she took her to work on monday she do anything for toya anything that toya want anything that you want and tell me what you want tell me what you need tell me if it ain't good enough for you babe i mean basically simone and toya is thick as thieves baby okay 
Andy just wants to hear from Quad. Dr. Heavenly, I just to me, this was Dr. Heavenly's best line. After Simone gave her monologue about everything that Toya has done for the people of the world, Dr. Heavenly says, but that's not a reason to be upset with Quad. That one simple statement. It was subtle, but to me, it was the truth. It was the truth. <sighs> Simone still screaming, shaking and hollering and crying. Quad says she's right that something tragic happened and she showed me love. And it was like old times. And Quad says she appreciates it and she thanks her. Um, and I thought that that was handled I thought that that was handled well, but I just don't think that they should be friends anymore. Um, not only for Quad's sake, but also for Simone's. Um, it doesn't sound healthy. Um, she's not getting what she wants out of that friendship. And I think that at that point, you just have to know when to end it. So I really don't quite understand why she's so screaming mad and upset. It's not like she's, it's not like Toya's, it's not like she's lost Toya. I mean, who brings a baloney? Anyway, um, Quad then asks, it's like it's, they're taking a break for lunch. So Quad pulls Jackie to the side and says, did you really think that I would bring out this clip to hurt you? Um, Dr. Jackie is like, well, you know, I was in a bad place. And she basically says this to Quad. They don't, they're, they're not connected with Quad enough to know if she would do that or not. And she'd rather lose a friend than lose herself. <laughs> mm. Ain't that funny? Um, I guess it's funny to me because, like, you've just been working with this girl for 10 years. So you ain't know her well enough to know that she wouldn't. And, and again, I think that the thing that's being lost here is that Dr. Jackie thinks that this clip was brought up to be malicious. Maybe it was just brought up to 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 ask a valid question like you're talking this talk, but behind the scenes, this is what you is this what you really think? And the smarter play to do would have just been to say, you know what? I said that and I shouldn't have said that. I understand that I hurt a lot of people and for that I'm sorry and I'm I'm I vow to continue doing the hard work that I do to be an advocate to be a patient advocate to do whatever I can to ensure that the work that I've I've put in for the past 20 30 years is not overshadowed by this one moment please do not let this one moment define what you think about me and the work that I'm doing. That to me is an honest, I didn't even, I didn't, I didn't have to think. I just felt my way through it. It wasn't nothing I had to read. It wasn't anything. I just felt my way through it. And I think that maybe if she spent a little more time feeling her way through things and leading with that. Versus this poised, perched persona, then I think that she would spend a little less time searching for a villain that does not exist in Quad. So with that being said, y'all, that is my review for The Married to Medicine Season 10 Reunion Part 1. I mean, say what I can say what I want about these ladies, but they delivered, okay? And I'm so fascinated to see where things go from here. And I want them to pick up the camera with the same cast and get the film rolling. We need Andy and the camera stat. Let me know what you guys thought about it in the comment section down below. And of course, I will catch you in the next video.